The Afghan American Chamber of Commerce serves the interest of its members through numerous programs, advocates for a free and open market economy in Afghanistan, and endeavors to strengthen U.S.-Afghanistan economic relations. AACC's annual U.S.-Afghanistan Business Matchmaking Conference is the world's leading event for promotion of the private sector, business matchmaking, and investment in Afghanistan. AACC works to ensure that Afghanistan's economy and employment of the Afghan people remains a top priority for the U.S. and Afghan policymakers and serves as a link between business and government to encourage progressive economic policies that will result in increased business, job creation, and investment between the U.S. and Afghanistan. We believe that peace and stability can only be achieved in Afghanistan through the success and growth of the private sector. It is the goal of AACC to promote the exchange of information and provide resources to its members through investment conferences, seminars, networking events, publications, and other avenues to stimulate U.S.-Afghanistan business and investment. The Afghan American Chamber of Commerce Facilitating U.S.-Afghan business, investment, and trade ties. Um, we're very, very happy trying to stay on schedule, right on schedule right now, to welcome our next guest, Mr. Greg Huger, the Assistant to the Administrator of USAID for Afghanistan and Pakistan Affairs. Come on up, Greg. We'll have you take a seat and then you can make your remarks. Greg has been uh, a long time... Uh, I, I, at this time, we could not have a better assistant administrator for Afghanistan for multiple reasons. First, Greg has a long history in the private sector world, working for big multinational companies and having to go into developing country markets and understand how do we get business going there, how do we make our investments. So he brings this private sector component. Then he had a career in USAID, working in some of the toughest areas in Pakistan. Uh, trying to effectuate programming to stabilize regions that are very problematic. And he brings that knowledge and experience with him into the Afghanistan portfolio as well. So we have a great ally on private sector enabling environment, on private sector growth with Greg Huger and the whole USAID team. Greg is supported by an outstanding uh, office support up in, we call it OAPA, Office of Afghanistan and Pakistan Affairs, including uh, David Bailey and John Stitch and Nitin Madhav, and, and I'm going to miss some people, but uh, we want to thank all of the AID office support on private sector. In the last few years now, uh, they have really stepped up the private sector activities. So Greg is here today to speak to us uh, about new initiatives and th their pivot, basically, to really get the private sector engine in Afghanistan going. And I'll talk about ways that we can work together with him, uh, both as private sector businesses and the AACC itself. And we're very happy to welcome him, and I hope that you'd give him some great applause. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Dr. Furuki, the delegation from Afghanistan, all of you, thank you for coming. And all of the friends who are here from the United States, Afghan, American, and American, and other. Uh, it's a real pleasure for me to again speak at this conference I did two years ago in a different context. And I'm very happy to be here uh, as the USAID assistant administrator in charge of our programs in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I've been doing that for just about eight months. Made a couple of trips to Afghanistan and to Pakistan. I'm going out uh, twice in the next 
six, six weeks to Afghanistan, India, and Pakistan. And um, would like to say a few words about uh, where we are with all of this, and then talk a bit more specifically about our focus and how we might uh, partner with you to do great things in Afghanistan. So while Afghanistan has significantly transformed in the last 16 years, the country still faces, as we all know, serious challenges ahead. And the responsible and the uh, responsible international economic support is necessary if Afghanistan is to surmount these difficulties. The U.S. is committed to continue to provide its share of that support. And USAID will continue to be actively involved in delivering it as we have been. We applaud the national unity government's emphasis on mobilizing private investment rather than seeking greater donor assistance and laying the groundwork for future investment, which is integral to establishing a sustainable economy and national stability in Afghanistan. The Afghan-US Compact emphasizes exactly this, and we very much appreciate President Ghani's point that Afghanistan does not need to be told how to reform, but welcomes help to do what it knows is needed, and that's where we fit in. The South Asia strategy. Last August, as you know, President Trump announced a new integrated South Asia strategy that promotes U.S vital interests in our relationship with Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, and others in the region. An important feature of this strategy, as you also know, is the shift away from a time-based approach to a conditions-based approach. In Afghanistan, our goal is to promote a more inclusive, economically viable and self-reliant ally with which the U.S. government can better partner in our mutual national security interests. As a cr critical component of our new strategy in Afghanistan and as a top priority for our new administrator, USAID in Afghanistan is working hard to support public-private partnerships, and key reforms, resulting in a dramatic increase so far in Afghan exports. Now, a few words about our new administrator, Mark Green's priorities as they might if affect what we're doing in Afghanistan. Um, administrator Green has made public-private partnerships and internal procurement reform a priority. He said, we want to tap into the entrepreneurship, creativity, and ingenuity of the private sector when he was at the Davos conference recently. Uh, USAID is moving from being an agency that primarily has made grants and contracts to fund its own ideas to being one that's reaching out to the private sector to co-create, co-design, and co-fund initiatives that make sense to all involved. Another new priority for the agency is a focus on supporting countries to become self-reliant. The closing words of the new agency mission statement under Administrator Green are to help people progress beyond assistance. As you know, this is very consistent with Afghanistan's road to self-reliance strategy that's been a focus now for a few years. Now, a few words about USAID's strategy in Afghanistan, which is clearly 
a part of and under uh, the South Asia strategy and supportive of the national unity government strategy. Uh, USAID is developing a new five-year strategy in Afghanistan in response to President Trump's South Asia strategy, as well as Administrator Green's focus on developing much closer relationships with the private sector. This development strategy focuses on increasing Afghan government revenue base by enabling private sector-led economic growth and strengthening service delivery. The objective is to reduce the Afghan government's reliance on donor assistance, improve the country's stability, and enhance accountability for our assistance. Promoting private sector development with a focus on market and population centers is key to this strategy. Thus, we concentrate going forward on the five major market centers where government control is strong, it's easy for us to operate, and we can work out into the provinces from there. I, I must say we enthusiastically support Director General Shah Habibi's efforts to create export processing zones in the airports in these cities. These will allow a secure platform for private companies to invest in plant and equipment to process the product of the Afghan land and from which to reach out to the rural areas to develop export product. This approach will enable resources to reach Afghanistan's population more efficiently, support legitimate Afghan institutions, and emphasize private sector export-led approaches to promoting links to, to domestic, regional, and international markets, as has been discussed uh, yesterday in this meeting and, and this morning. Now, a few key areas of focused U.S. engagement and development. First, private sector reforms. USAID continues to support the Afghan government's economic reforms to attract private investment and to rebuild Afghanistan's economy, create jobs, reduce poverty, and generate revenue. I might mention that the US, USAID mission in Kabul has been instrumental in helping establish the Afghanistan Exporters Club that functions as a credible advocacy group for export-driven economic development and a strong voice for appropriate policy and regulatory reform. Second, agriculture. The majority of Afghans, as you know, rely on agriculture for their livelihoods and it's a primary driver of economic growth. USAID's agricultural programs emphasize market-driven activities, including the export of high-value crops. Our investments also focus on addressing the local demand for agricultural goods and services by partnering with the private sector to develop growth-oriented agricultural value chains in the products for which Afghanistan has been famous for over a thousand years. I remember when I was in Bagram working in eastern Afghanistan. I had come back from a day in Logar and had had some delicious apples with the governor uh, at lunch. And I was reading the Babur Nama the journal of Babur, who came down from Central Asia to found the Mughal Empire. And he wrote the journal 550 something years before. And I was reading and I thought, my goodness, that's what I saw today. People producing these fantastic apples, grapes, and other products 
in Logar, and here's Babur talking about this. So these are the products for which Afghanistan has been famous forever. Nobody has to teach anybody in Afghanistan how to produce these products, and nobody has to introduce them to the markets of the region. They have the same cachet or even more than in a country like this, say French cheese or French wine would have. Everybody wants it, they're willing to pay more for it to get it. So, um, to develop uh, these uh, value chains uh, is a very important opportunity for Afghanistan that we're supporting. Uh, in addition to identifying constraints to business performance, USAID activities aim to strengthen local technical capacity as well as to facilitate the necessary interactions to make these value chains profitable. The support to agribusinesses stimulates growth in Afghanistan's agricultural sector to create jobs improve livelihoods and boost the economy. The third uh, focal point that I will mention in our activities is new trade routes. Expanded trade routes, as you all know, um, are greatly increasing the opportunities that Afghan businesses have to export to regional markets. Specific examples include the new transit trade agreement that President Ghani signed in Uzbekistan in December. Another is the Lapis Lazuli Agreement that was mentioned yesterday, negotiated in November of 2017, with Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Armenia, and Turkey, which created a new trade corridor to Europe and increased trade with India through the Kabul Delhi Air Corridor inaugurated in June 2017 and now expanded to Mumbai, Almaty, and other locations. We're also working with the government to help open up railroad-based exports to the north through Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, and elsewhere. The fourth are export processing zones. I mentioned them a minute ago. Pardon me for mentioning them again, but I think they're very important. I'm excited that you're moving ahead with them and we really want to support it. USAID's working with the Afghan Civil Aviation Authority, the Ministry of Commerce, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Agriculture to help establish export processing zones adjacent to the four Afghan international airports in the cities that I had mentioned a minute ago. These export processing zones will help facilitate processing of high value goods, mitigate customs related corruption, improve security, and promote international investment while supporting new air cargo routes. I've been involved with efforts that USAID has supported together with the private sector in various countries over the last 35 years. One of them, for example, was El Salvador in Central America when there was a shooting war going on there. And the private sector wanted to put together export processing zones because they would get security and they could have a, a safer environment uh, to process goods to sell in the U.S. market, which was very near as India is to you. Uh, that worked out really well. Uh, we've done it in Egypt and several other places. So I think in Afghanistan, these export processing zones will offer on the several of the things that would, would be impediments to encouraging investors to put money uh, into uh, the plant and equipment to process the product of the countryside. And those things that are being taken away, those risks that will disappear, security, electricity, access to land, and 
because of the one-stop centers and the, ones, and the things that were discussed yesterday, um, they will facilitate transparent relationships between the government and the businesses in the uh, export processing zones. So that would allow a business to take advantage of the great opportunities of Afghanistan without the liabilities that the country currently faces. So it's a very good idea, in my opinion. Uh, and the fifth uh, of six focal points that I'd like to mention is trade facilitation. And through USAID's assistance, Afghan air exports doubled in 2017 and now represent more than half of all Afghan exports by value at more than $390 million. And we expect this trend will continue and project that Afghanistan has the potential to reach $1 billion in 2018. And I would hope to double that again in 2020. Hmm. That at least would be our goal from where we sit. Uh, USAID is supporting the push for increased exports in a number of ways, including developing and rehabilitating air cargo capacity at the airport in the five of the major market centers, um, including Jalalabad. Launching trade shows in India and other markets where, as you know, uh, many of you and other Afghan businesses have sold millions and millions of dollars of product, uh, not promises, but paid for uh, and delivered in, to those markets. Um, and supporting uh, the uh, Afghan Civil Aviation Authority to expand new flight routes and air corridors to and from Afghanistan and facilitating the World Trade uh, Organization accession requirements. The sixth of six focal points that I will mention is energy. Now, access, as you all know, anywhere, including Afghanistan, access to reliable and affordable energy is a key driver of economic growth. USAID will complete the Southern Electric Power System and the transmission line, which connects it with the Northeast Power System. As was mentioned yesterday, recent progress on energy projects includes the Kandahar Solar Park, the Bayat Energy and Ghazanfar gas-fired power plants in Shebergan and Mazar Sharif, respectively. However, Afghanistan imports 80% of its electricity and only 30% of the population is connected to the power grid. So much more work remains. We continue to support expanding access to the national grid while also promoting small-scale, off-grid, renewable energy projects, such as solar and wind in rural areas that can supply reliable power to business and social institutions. USAID is seeking input from the private sector in Afghanistan regarding your unmet needs for electric power and your capacity to pay for it. We will then reach out to private companies willing and able to invest in generating electric power in Afghanistan and explore opportunities to partner with those companies which are capable, most capable of meeting that demand. So if you look on the USAID website now, you will find a request for information regarding unmet need of businesses, your business activities for electric power, and how much your business would allow you to pay for it. Not that when one is buying electric power, one can name the price you're going to pay, 
but we're interested in knowing what businesses feel they can pay to get that additional power that they need to meet their full potential. So then we're going to follow that up, reaching out again to private businesses who are ready, willing, and able to invest in generating electricity in Afghanistan and we'll look for ways that USAID can partner with them to facilitate that, as we did with the uh, solar park in Kandahar, or in other ways that appear to be more appropriate in that context. USAID will proactively support the growth of private sector involvement in the generation of electric power in Afghanistan, as we did in the growth of the telecommunications market years back. We feel, and we've heard this from some of the private investors who are involved with this sector, that this is a market that can be built, can grow. And what it needs to do that is an enabling environment of regulation and administration and policy that's adequate for this kind of investment. It needs more deals, more operations that are giving proof of concept that yes, this is possible. Private companies can invest in generating electric power in Afghanistan and can make money at that. So if you've got a minimally at least adequate enabling environment, you've got some deals that are giving proof of concept, then the market will grow because others who are not in will see that it's a good opportunity to make money doing something they know how to do, and those that are already in will grow. I think uh, our honoree last night uh, for the AACC Leadership Award is a perfect example of that kind of mentality and experience. Um, with regard to the regulatory environment, the private sector plays a pivotal role in addressing a number of challenges in Afghanistan, including the country's rapid population growth, unemployment, slow economic growth, and dependent on international, dependence on international donors. Improving the business environment to facilitate growth and expansion will help generate the revenue for the government and increase business formation and job creation. Working with and empowering the private sector will continue to be a key U.S. government focus across all sectors. However, the policy and regulatory environment in Afghanistan is challenging and any significant improvement in the business operating environment will require the continuous and dedicated commitment from Afghanistan government officials. Uh, this commitment uh, has been clearly uh, given in the video that we saw yesterday from His Excellency President Ghani and in what we've heard in the presentations and the discussions that we've had with the representative of representatives of the government of Afghanistan who are here at this meeting. So we're encouraged by all of that. USAID supports the government's, Afghan government's efforts to combat corruption and its efforts to make key reforms in order to improve the environment for the private sector and deliver effective, transparent Afghan governance. Now in conclusion, I think that the men and women here today embody the spirit many have come to love about Afghanistan. Like Dr. Ehsan Bayat, who is the recipient of the 2018 AACC uh, Leadership Award. Despite all of the obstacles in your way, your ambition gives you the ability to foresee what many can't, a future where Afghanistan is known not for conflict, but for concord. 
a country renowned not for the ravages of battle, but for the quality and craftsmanship of its products, and a nation famous not for poverty, but for prosperity. The U.S. will remain a partner to the Afghan government and to all of you as we strive to achieve this vision together. Afghanistan's future, our own national interests, and the world's collective security depend on it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg. We're going to do a few questions, if it's okay, sure. uh, with everybody. If you can raise your hand, if you have questions, we'll have a mic to get to. If uh, Doug or one of my compatriots from the board could grab the mics in the back. I'm going to start with just a couple of ones that I want to have you uh, expand on a little bit. I know that you are dramatically improving the relationship between USAID and OPIC and USAID and USGS to basically support private sector activities. Can you give the, the audience just a little feel on what you're doing now with OPIC that maybe is different from before and USGS, you just signed a big MOU with them, how that's going to help us. And then second issue is um, the compact. You know, I think our feeling is, as an association of business leaders, that the compact has really changed how we're talking about uh, performance in the private sector enabling environment. It's really holding the Afghan government accountable for deliverables that we have tried to get them to be accountable for, but maybe we weren't always able to do that in the past. But now we really see a difference, and President Ghani's really been pushing hard on achieving those deliverables. And I think that helps us in the, in the private sector side because a lot of those deliverables, although some of them may be economic reform related or finance related or ICT related, they do impact tremendously on the private sector investment environment itself. So could you maybe grab those two and then we'll throw it to the audience for any questions. Yes. Let me take the second one first uh, because it's quite an easy one. Uh, not that the first one's difficult, but... <laughs> One of the differences between the compact and the conditions of assistance of earlier times is that the performance measures are ones that were defined by the Afghan government and presented as the plan of the government of Afghanistan. And that goes along with President Ghani's comment that uh, Afghanistan doesn't need people to tell them how to reform. They know what to do. They have a lot of experience around the world and in Afghanistan. And so they then prepared and presented to the US uh, performance measures that addressed security and very importantly, economic development and within it, uh, private sector development. So, uh, I feel that that's a fundamental difference, and I think that's why um, the measures in the compact are being addressed on time and well. Uh, so it's very consistent with what our relationship is now and what it will be as we go forward. Now, with regard to the uh, synergy among various U.S. government agencies that work together on supporting private sector development in Afghanistan or around the world. Um, USAID uh, has a very central role in delivering uh, the economic and civilian part of the South Asia strategy. And so we have made a particular effort to reach out to our colleague agencies, the Department of Commerce through the uh, engaging and financing their activities through the Commercial Law Development Program, uh, Overseas Private Investment Corporation, to, br to bring to bear their financial capability uh, to support things that require that. Uh, for example, in looking at how we might uh, partner with private sector companies uh, who are um, ready, willing, and able to get involved in generating electricity in 
Afghanistan. Uh, we have some grant money that we can put into those partnerships as we did with the partnership around the solar project in Kandahar, which was a first effort in this regard. But OPIC can leverage our money and the investment money from the private sector to significantly expand the financing available and the coverage of risk necessary to uh, move those deals forward. And, and so it is with, with the other agencies. Um, we are engaging them to the maximum extent possible and I would say a difference between the way it is being done now and the way it was being done um, in the time I was working with USAID in Afghanistan, 2010 through 13, was that uh, we have now we're engaging more the other US agencies than we would uh, in many cases in the past have done with contractors. Uh, and we feel that that's a good way to do it because within the administration uh, we want a synergy that pulls together all the resources that we have, all the capability and knowledge and relationships that we have to help achieve success in the South Asia strategy. So it makes first to re sense to reach out to our brothers and sisters who are working in other U.S. agencies and see how to get them involved. The, uh, yesterday, the gentleman from the U.S. Geological Survey spoke, and he goes back to 1952, working in Afghanistan. Wow. Um, that's a unique capability, and we know that there is a, a wealth of that kind of experience and ability available within the various agencies of the U.S. government if you look for it, and in fact, it's less expensive for us to mobilize them than it would be for us to mobilize a commercial contract and pay the overhead for it. That's not to say that we're not going to do contracts with commercial companies anymore, because we are. And they bring a lot to the table as well. But in this case, we're looking much more first to engage uh, the appropriate brother and sister agencies, and then to see where do we go beyond that. Okay, very good. Well, I want to note, uh, we have a question here. That I, I want to note the slide that's on both sides. That is the survey slide that Greg was talking about. So if you go to that link, the www link, you can fill out the electricity demand survey as a business owner in Afghanistan, and that information will flow into USAID's decision making on where they prioritize uh, financing assistance, facilitation assistance on energy and related infrastructure. So please go to the website and fill that out. And Doug, we'll go to you for your question. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, Salim Hilali from Creative Associates International. Uh, my question is with regards to uh, the timeline uh, about the USAID strategy for Afghanistan. When will that be approved and made available public? Thank you for the question. I love it. Uh, I came on this job appointed by the President on September 5th of 2017. I saw that the South Asia strategy as, as it was had emerged and been announced by the President uh, was something that was very close to what USAID can do and had been doing. And I learned from my colleagues that the reason for that is that the people at the National Security Council who were developing the strategy included very significantly my colleagues from USAID in putting the strategy together. And many of the things, things that I was just talking about um, that they suggested were considered to be good ideas and thus were included in the strategy. And so what we did during the first three weeks I was on this job is we said, okay, let's get it down to a few points because nobody's going to want to hear or read a hundred pages about what we're going to do. We want, let's get the real story here. So we came down with three things in Afghanistan. First, 
to uh, help sustain the gains that Afghanistan has made in the social sector during the last 16 years, health, education, women's empowerment. Second, to help build the bond between the Afghan people and the government through providing good services, through having credible elections, and through helping the government reduce corruption in key ministries. And third, to support private sector-led economic development, importantly but not exclusively focused on exports. And since it is relevant to what's going on in Afghanistan, our Pakistan three things were to help Pakistan mainstream FATA, giving full rights of citizenship to the people there and reintegrating the million and a half people that had been internally displaced by the war. Second, to help communities gain resilience to violent extremism. And third, to support private sector-led growth to create jobs, importantly, for the three million or so young Pakistanis that come into the workforce every year. So, from October 1st, that's been our strategy. And we are working on uh, developing a full-fledged USAID country development strategy statement. And that'll be done sometime this summer, maybe the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. And that's an important exercise, but it, it, we didn't wait for that to know what we're doing. We said, it's three, it's three, and then underlying that, um, an enhanced attention to accountability for the U.S. taxpayer funds that go into paying for all of this. All right, one more question, and then we'll have to wrap up. Yeah, my name is Dr. Rafi from Bashir General Trading. Two more. Uh, from Bashir General Trading. But quick. Who's sponsor <laughs> of the meeting. Um, I just want to know for these private sector investment into energy production in Afghanistan, we've, we've heard a lot about the PPP regu regulation and the World Bank trying to uh, be the mediator between the public and the, the government and the private sector as in guaranteeing the uh, bigger projects in Afghanistan. What is the role USAID is going to uh, play in terms of ensuring private sectors with their investment? Because we have tried to approach a lot of uh, external sources in terms of insurance companies abroad to ensure these projects, but nobody is willing to insure any project in Afghanistan. Well, First, in the same way, or almost the same way, that I described our reaching out to the other U.S. government agencies that are involved with private sector development in Afghanistan and beyond, we have also reached out to and are engaged with the multilateral organizations and other bilaterals, the World Bank and the Asia Development Bank being two important ones of those. So, we do not have an investment insurance program at USAID. Uh, we do have uh, significant funds that can be used flexibly to support uh, transactions where an investor, a private investor, is looking to invest in generating electric power in Afghanistan and we can find, and that's what we're trying to do, as I said, uh, co-design, co-create, and co-fund with the private sector. So our process right now, which begins with this, what are the needs? Not that there aren't big studies on it, but we want to hear directly from businesses, what's your unmet need for electric power and how much you, can you pay for it? To then follow with something like that that would ask companies uh, are you, which one, please let us know if you're interested and able to invest in generating electric power in Afghanistan. And what would be the, uh, how could USAID support that? So we would then tailor our support to the needs of the various transactions as they would present themselves through our co-creation and consultation with the private sector. We also are working though, as I said, with the World Bank as they set up their guarantee fund that can help with guarantees necessary for projects that would be private sector producers of energy, and so with other agencies. So we're putting this together, trying to take what we have, understand what the private sector is willing to do and able to do, 
and then building in through relationships with our own agencies and with others, uh, what else is out there and how can we make this work? And I think also, don't forget, USAID has a Development Credit Authority office which has a pool of funding for guarantees specifically for Afghanistan. And you can come and meet with USAID right here in Washington, right upstairs here, uh, and the DC office would be happy to talk to you about specific projects, I'm sure. Short questions, and we'll try to do short Actually, I don't have a question, just uh, a statement of thanks thank you. directed towards USAID for the great work that they've done in Afghanistan. My name is Huda Farooqi from the American University of Afghanistan. And in particular, not only to the private sector, but to the education sector and the f f phenomenal support provided to AUAF. So thank you for that, sir. You're most welcome, and thank you for your comment. Thank you. Dr. Ritter has a comment. Doug, down in front, he'll be our last comment or question. And we have our next panel ready to go. Uh, John, John Ritter, uh, uh, you said identify myself. He already did. Okay. <laughs> Um, can, if, AI, if USAID is, is engaged in a, an electricity uh, production, electricity generation project, can, can that work toward, and OPIC is engaged, can that work, that USAID contribution, can that contribute to the 25% requirement that uh, OPIC has for uh, American participation in any given project that they fund overseas? I don't know, but I think it probably wouldn't. Probably wouldn't. No, because it's they're looking for private Private money. ownership, yeah. This is government money. Ours is government I, money. And But again, I'm not OPIC, and so I can't speak to that, yeah. but it's something we would look at. I, but, but we're looking at uh, private sector companies understand. that have real skin in the game, mm. are willing yeah. to put their money into a deal that they believe is going to be profitable for them, and then we would work with them, with the government of Afghanistan, departments that relate to it, and with other agencies that might participate to, to help make that happen. So I, I don't know, Don, but I don't think I, so. I, I kind of recall when I was doing this carpet uh, finishing and direct export project, carpet finishing and direct export project, that uh, that was the case. But it, was, it wasn't the, you know, the 25% reduced to 20 or 22 or whatever that was. It, it might have been that way. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I think with the Exim Bank problems of the last two years, they've, uh, Congress has put a tight squeeze on OPIC on the 25 and making sure that it's U.S. Uh, private sector investment in related services. Um, Greg, I want to say thank you from on behalf of all of us. We can't take any more questions. I'm sorry, but Greg will be here. So uh, when our next panel comes up, feel free if you want. You can grab Greg in the back of the room. And we, we don't want, we're already 20 minutes behind and we have a panel that's waiting to come up and I don't want to lose our panelists. So thank you, Greg, so much for your support You're and uh, the support of AACC. All. Thank you. All right, can we ask our Afghan-centered regional economic integration panel to come on up?